I'm going to continue right where the previous MATLAB video left off. There was an interrupting Octave video snuck in there for how to write data from Octave out to file. MATLAB users, you can skip the Octave videos and vice versa. All right, scrolling on down. So G input, this is used on, an ex on a homework problem in my course, uh, and it's used on problem 5.11 from MATLAB for Engineers 5th edition. And here's some calculations for how to solve that problem. I don't want to pay attention to the calculations. I want to pay attention to the plotting and more importantly, G input down here. So let's run this code and see what it does. So it should pop up a figure here. Great, here's our figure. And you'll notice that when I mouse over it, my mouse is not my usual cursor, but it's kind of a crosshair. And if I click, I'm gonna try and click like right at four on the Y axis, right at like 0 0.01 on the X axis. So let's try and click right around there. Great. And that was pretty accurate, a little off, but pretty accurate. And so two things happened when I clicked. One is the words yield point showed up on the figure, and then two numbers popped out on the command window. And I was pretty accurate with my X axis and my Y axis. Note that on the Y axis, we weren't actually expecting four to pop out. We were expecting 40,000 because you'll see up here, there's a X 10 to the fourth. So each of these numbers is times 10 to the fourth for that value over there. What G input does is you set two variables equal to it, X and Y. The X variable or whatever you choose to name it will hold a vector of all the X values that get clicked on. Y will hold a vector of all the Y values that get clicked on, and they'll be paired up. G input parentheses some number. The number is how many clicks are expected. So I only clicked once and I got just one pair of numbers, one X and one Y. If I put three in here, I would have clicked three times and then I would have got two different vectors, each with three values. And what can be potentially very useful with this is once I've got my X, Y coordinates, I can either type those right on in to a text function to display yield point at those given x, y coordinates, or I can just call the text function and pass in my variables for the x and y coordinates, and it will display the text yield point at that location on the graph. Continuing on down with another example related to that, let's run this code here. All right, so I've got this figure, just an arbitrary parabola, and I've got my crosshairs, and I'm gonna click at negative uh, eight comma zero. Huh, I just clicked and nothing happened. That's because the G input just has empty parentheses here. When there's empty parentheses, I can click as many times as I want, and all those values will be stored in vectors. In this case, I've named them A and B until I hit enter. So I've already clicked once. I'm gonna click twice, three times, four times, and then hit enter. All right, I just hit enter, and I still have a crosshair. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. But the results from my clicking was captured in variables A and B, and then I displayed it out here. Let's check it out. Great, apparently these are the X coordinates where I clicked, these are the X coordinates where I clicked, and these are the Y coordinates where I clicked. Now the reason there's still a crosshair on the figure right here is because then I called this function called gText. And the way gText works is, wherever you click, it will display the text that the gText function has been given. So what's in the parentheses of gText here. So put me on the screen, I'm gonna put it right up near the peak of the parabola and click there. Now where I click is where the bottom left corner of the text will be. The text will be slightly above and to the right of that coordinate. And that's it, just a quick little video showing G input, G text, and the text function itself. 